right, here's speaking with Dave East. I ever think about Foot Locker along with Wu Tang American Saga. How are you doing today? I'm great, bro. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm quite alive. Music is great out there. So um, tell me about this partnership. Why Foot Lock over other brands out there? Um, I've been feeling like I've been working with Foot Locker for a long time, a lot of different events, um, give backs, Christmas parties. I've been shopping with them all my life. So I just feel like they're a staple as far as the, the sneaker community is concerned. So, like, who better? Honestly. Now, do you have a lot of sneakers in your collection? Me? Hell yeah. <laughs> too many. Too many to count? Way too many. If you were to name one on top of your head, what would it be? A sneaker? Yes. These dead doors right here. <laughs> Davies joints. Now, I want to also um, bring up your music real quick because you've been in the game for a long time. So what really inspired you to get into the music industry? Always love rap. Uh, it always came easy to me. Uh, always something that I felt like I could enjoy doing, something I could make a career. Um, I just always loved everything that, that, that came with hip-hop from the clothes to the music to the lifestyle. It was, it was like naturally me, so it wasn't really hard. When you were growing up, um, who did you listen to the most? Growing up, I listened to a lot of Tupac, a lot of Biggie, a lot of Big Pun, a lot of Jada Kids, a lot of Cameron, a lot of DMX, a lot of Snoop, a lot of Outkast, a lot of Mary J. Blige, a lot of Marvin Gaye, a lot of Earth, Wind & Fire. The classics. Yeah, listen, I grew up on some, I got an old soul, so I grew up in that era um, early 90s, you know what I'm saying? Mid ni- late, later 90s, shit like that. So all of that music from that time, Mace, all of that shit. The locks, you know what I mean? A lot of that. Now, you was growing up also in the 90s, and I want to also bring up that you met, met a lot of them. So how did it feel for you when you met a lot of these um, legends in the business while you was also listening to them at the same time? It's crazy, surreal shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? A few artists I would see. Like Cam, Jim, uh, Jewels, I would see them just in the town. But everybody else, from Snoop to uh, Nas, all that, like all of these different artists that I've had a the 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 the, um, the opportunity to work with and get next to that shit is surreal because I grew up watching them and listening to them. So to have a number in my phone or to be able to pull up on them and make right. music with them is crazy. You're also on the Wu Tang American Saga, and also Wu Tang Clan is one of my favorite rap groups. So, to, <laughs> yeah, to finally see this show happen, I was quite amazed with the acting, not only with yourself, but also everyone on the cast. So, right. the f- next and final season is really coming up. Um, what can you say about giving anything away? I think it's the best season, honestly. Um, I think it really sh- is. I think the 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 crowd is going to be able to really identify with this season a lot because it's like the Wu-Tang that the world knew. I think season one and two was more about their background, how they came up, you know what I'm saying? Shit like things that we didn't know, what the public didn't really know. I think season three is the closest thing to um, the Wu-Tang I grew up on and watching them and how meth was and all that. So I think this season is definitely something to look forward to. Now, speaking of meth, um, how how could how, – I'll ask this because – not only that, you had to get his voice right, but also his mannerisms. So how long have you been in discussions with Method Man when it came to getting everything he did right? I grew up on Meth, so that was like, uh, it wasn't really hard. I didn't have to change my voice, you know what I'm saying, too much. We both kind of got a raspy tone or whatever. Yeah, I can, I can hear it. So that wasn't really hard to do that as far as the voice. But the mannerisms, that just really, I had to go back, watch YouTube. Watch old meth videos, watch his performances, like, to catch his, you know what I'm saying, to catch all of that. I had to, like, really study that. But besides that, I grew up on meth, so a lot of the, the, the things that I was reading in the script, I just put my own, my own twist to it. Shit came out right. And my, before we move on, uh, what were your conversations with um, RZA, like, when it came to developing Meth Man for the show? Well, RZA, RZA helped me so much, bro. Like, he, he um, very easy to work with, very, um, it's black and white with RZA. Like, he tell you what he want, right. you know what I'm saying? If if that ain't what, if, if you're not doing what he want, he let you know that. So I think it was just a, um, it was dope for me because, like I said, I'm a fan of Wu-Tang from a child. 
and I've always been a fan of his beats, you know what I mean? So to see him in another light, see him directing, see him with a whole cast and crew, and he's orchestrating the whole shit, that was fire, you know what I mean? I just feel like I learned a lot being side by side with him day in, day out on the set, you know what I mean? Big, big shout out to RZA. Now, one thing I'm also noticing is a lot of rappers that's also getting into TV shows, and a lot of them are very successful. Do you think we'll see this trend continue in years to come? Because I see you on Wu-Tang. I see um, Joey Badass on the power shows. Yeah, I believe it is. I think it's something that, um, you know, rap is, a, is just a way to get into so much more. And I always thought that I didn't, I didn't start rapping or get into rapping just to rap. I felt like right. once I got acknowledged for my rap, I'd be able to, you know, jump into other things, whether it was fashion, acting, shit that I always kind of wanted to do. I just didn't know how to go at it. So once you build a brand with your music, you know what I mean, or your fashion or whatever you got going on, when you build a brand, it's almost like dumb to not expand it. So I, I definitely would, I'm in support of more rappers uh, jumping into acting if, if that's what they choose to do. Like That's just something I always liked. I like the I like movies and I like music. So I had to do both, you know what I mean? My final one for you, um, how are you juggling between making music and also acting at the same time? Because that must be quite heavy for you. I'm a robot, bro. <laughs> Real shit. If you ask anybody that be with me, I don't, I'm, I'm, I could, I could, I'm good off a nap, maybe an hour of sleep, you know what I mean, two hours, and I could get right back to it. So, And that been from before any of this. Like that, That's just been how I've been programmed for years. So I think um, my drive above anything else is what keeps me being able to multitask and, you know, juggle all these different things I'm doing at the same time and not crash out. I'm already, like, wired to move like this, you know what I'm saying? So it don't really affect me. Thank you so much for your time today. I had a great time speaking with you. Same here, bro.